The Revo is called a music player transport, but it could also be called a network player, a streamer and can function as a network bridge. It runs for Lumio software and buying the Revo gives access to all the Lumio features without a monthly fee. Currently Volumio offers three models. The Revo is the 989 euro streamer that only has digital outputs and thus needs a DAC or amplifier with integrated DAC. The Primo costs 799 euros has a DAC built in. The Integro has a DAC and amps built in and sets you back 1199 euros. I already reviewed the Primo and the Integro. Links at the usual places. It shows that the Revo is put higher in the market since it is 190 euros more expensive than the Primo while the Primo comes with a DAC integrated. But let's first see where the Revo, Italian for stream, is to be used. The Revo needs to be connected to your network to connect to the internet to play from streaming services and internet radio stations. If you have music stored on your computer or NAS, that can be played too when the computer is connected to your home network too. The output of the Revo needs to be connected to a digital to analog converter over SPDIF, ASEBU or USB. The DAC in turn needs to be connected to an amplifier with speakers connected. The Revo is controlled using either an app on a tablet or smartphone or using a browser on a computer, smartphone or tablet. Instead of a separate DAC and AMP, an AMP with integrated DAC can be used too. The Revo is an elegant device that is typical Italian by design. It is also built in Italy. The outside is of grey anodized aluminium with a blue perspex front and black metal rear. It measures 270 by 150 by 50 mm and weighs 2.25 kilos, excluding the external Woolworth power supply. The front only holds a standby push button with color coded status LED. On the rear, we see a power switch, the DC power input that needs 5 volts 3 amps, then a clean USB bus intended for use with the DAC. Alternatively, the DAC can be connected using the SPDIF or AES EBU outputs. A USB 2 bus can be used for either a thumb drive or USB drive holding music or for a mouse or keyboard. The USB C next to it is not used. The HDMI output lets you display the user interface on a larger monitor or TV. If that is a touchscreen, the touchy part can be connected over USB 2. Above the HDMI output there is a slot for a micro SD memory card holding music. When you use a wired network it is to be connected here. The USB 3 bus is for connecting fast storage media like SSD drives, again storing music. The two supplied Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas are connected here. Inside we see a small board computer as is often the case with streamers. Sometimes it's a ready to use streaming module or a Raspberry Pi. Here it is the Cardas VIM3L. It uses an M-Logic S905D3 system on a chip along with 2GB of LPDDR4 RAM, 16GB of eMMC flash storage and a neural processing unit capable of up to 1.2 tops of performance. It is the module that can be found in all three current models, making it easy for software development. The differences are in the other hardware. The Revo has an extensive filter bank that can't be found in the other two models. I presume it filters the incoming DC voltage. Multi-layer circuit boards don't tell you much. Next to it is a small microprocessor, probably to handle the standby function. Then, very widely set up, the digital output circuits. There is a chip that does the AES3 outputs and a internet transformer obviously used for the AES-EBU output. 
This can easily be used since Ethernet and ASEBU use almost the same impedance, 100 versus 110 ohms. It is therefore unlikely that the SPDIF output is galvanically separated too, since SPDIF is 75 ohms. Both AES3 outputs are limited by standard to PCM 192 kHz 24 bit. The separate chip takes care of the USB audio class 2 output while the 5 volts line on the USB bus is extra filtered for low noise. It does PCM768 32 bit and DSD256. The clock crystal is in between the AES3 and USB circuit. Since it works identical to the other two models, I'll show you that part from the Primo review. Since the Primo has no controls, apart from the standby button, everything is controlled from a smartphone, tablet or computer. That can be done in a browser by typing primo.local in the address bar or by using the Volumeo app on a tablet or smartphone. I use the app on an iPad Pro. When you start up the Primo for the first time you are asked a number of questions to set up the Primo. You then end up in this screen. The menu in the left top corner lets you enter your account if you have one and shows you the other volume players in the network, if you have them. I have four Raspberry Pi based players plus the Primo running for this test. If you like you can couple them or switch to control another player. A nice feature of Lumio is plugins. Although in this version many plugins lack, I think that's due to the limited stability of those plugins and because a number of functions are already integrated in the Primo and Combo versions, like Rune Endpoint, CD Playback and Ripping, Tidal Connect, Tidal, Cobus, Multiroom Playback, Bluetooth Audio Playback, Music and Artist Credit Discovery and Cast to Sonos and Chromecast. These are paid options for the freeware versions. From the system menu updates can be installed easily. Time to find the music. The button just above the lower right corner brings you to the music sources. The first two, favorites and playlists, are empty in my case. Music library brings you to the music on the drive on USB 3. It uses maps. Artist lists artists and in a given artist you see the albums you have. Albums and genres work the same way. Internet radio is browsed by country, language, genre and so on. Volumio is currently adding artificial intelligence to the search engine. It's still in beta and I find it hard to comment on it. But Volumio users can try it by following the instructions on the Volumio site. For my colleague Jaap Veenstra of alpha-audio.net I already heard that upgrading from the supplied Walworth power supply was rather beneficiary to the sound quality. So I plan testing the Revo with all 5 volt power supplies I have. The 69 Euro iFi iPower, the 200 Euro Allo Shanti, the 240 Euro PD Creative Super Low Noise, the 300 Euro S Booster BOTW PMP Eco the 490 euros Farad Super 3 and the 1200 euro Fermin Hipsus. Switching from the standard power supply to the iFi did clean up the sound. Some harshness was taken away and sibilance was somewhat better controlled. Going to the shanty brought some air in the stereo image while sibilance was again somewhat better. The PD Creative was where it started to become serious. Now the Revo started to sing, sound more subtle, more engaging. The S booster sounded more rounded, warmer and yet open. The far out was yet another step up. Now the stereo image really opened up while voices, strings and copper sounded more refined and with an increased resolution. The background now was seriously black. The firm Hipsus was yet another step up but it's also a rather big step up financially. So I decided to review the Revo with the Farad power supply, next to the standard wall ward of course. That also made it easier to compare it with the Magnum Mano Ultra MK3 Farad that has the Farad power supply as standard. A 
I started listening tests in my setup to A, where the Revo was connected to the network over an Upturn Audio Ether Regen switch with Upturn Audio Ultra Caps 1.2 power supply. From there a fiber connection to the Netgear ProSafe GS418 TPP switch on the third floor. See about my reference setups May 2023 for more information. Links at the usual places. The SPDIF output of the Revo was connected to the Dennis Freeps SPDIF input over a professional video cable. Alternatively I used an AudioQuest Forest A to B USB cable. The analog outputs of the Denafrips were connected to the Marantz PM KI Pearl light amplifier over Siltec London RCA cables. It drives the Acoustic Energy Radiance 1 loudspeakers, connected over Kimber 4PR loudspeaker cable and supported by the RHEL T5 subwoofer that is connected to the loudspeaker terminals on the Marantz using the cable that came with the sub. An iPad Pro running the Volumio and Rune apps was used to select the music. In this setup the Revo sounded somewhat less to the current reference here, the aforementioned Magna. The sound quality using the Volumio software was somewhat lower than when using Rune over RAD or Odevana over DNA. Differences weren't big though. I also compared the USB output and that was somewhat cleaner but not a lot. I wanted to know if the AES EBU output would sound better. But since the Aris 2 doesn't have AES EBU input, I inserted a Nutrig SPDIF to AES EBU converter which in essence is a high frequency transformer. That indeed gave clear improvement in sound quality. It clearly reduced jitter in the DAC. Now the sound quality was about on par with the Magna. In setup 1B the Revo was connected to the Zixel GS1900-10HP switch over the Network Acoustics Muon Pro. The MyTech Brooklyn that was powered by the Ferrum Hipsys power supply was connected over AES EBU and alternatively over USB using cables by Network Acoustics. The Air Acoustics AX520 was connected over Grim Audio SQM XLR cables. The PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers on Stack Audio OVA70 isolators were connected to the amp over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The iPad Pro running the Vlumio and Rune apps again was used to select the music. Here the difference between the three outputs were even clearer. Since the Brooklyn does have AES EBU, SPDIF and USB Audio Class 2 inputs they could be compared directly. My favourite is AES EBU. Together with the Farad power supply it is a good streamer in its class, only slightly below the Magna. A good stereo image that projects instruments against a rather black background good sibilance control and decent resolution. I rate this combination halfway setup 1B. With the standard power supply it comes halfway setup 2A. The Revo is clearly one level above its siblings and accordingly is higher priced. One pre is that the hardware and the software are matched and the otherwise optional Volumio features come free for the Revo owner. Although I read negative comments from frustrated Volumio users, I didn't have any problems using Volumio, not on the Volumio hardware nor on the Raspberry Pi based players I have. That was somewhat different years ago, but since version 3 it all runs very smooth. Which brings me to the end of this video. As usual, there will be a new video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to my channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially, it keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you on the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.